I'm Austin. And I'm Justin. This is the third episode of Amazeballs. Amazeballs. Justin, do you remember what the name of today's episode is? No, uh, I forget. How could you forget? Never forget! Oh, okay, I remember. Not 9-11. It's yeah. the yeah. Alamo! Yeah. Oh, Alamo. Alamo Job. Alamo Job, yep. Yeah. Right. So I'm the Master Blaster Jack, and I'm the Universal King of Rap. Check it out. I'm a mean, lean, rapping machine. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But you've got the threads that's the turn in my head. So, we have our first time travel episode here in right. episode 3. It's pretty cool. And I liked it. And yeah. action-packed. Yeah, which is good because I felt like the acting was a little subpar in this one. It like was especially, especially compared to like how great it was in the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I like it felt way like it did feel lesser than the last one. Yeah, You're right. Like just acting-wise, but it made up for it. Oh, just in wall-to-wall -wall action. Yeah. Uh, it was, and it was still funny. Like, yeah, there were some parts that that was still legitimately funny. Uh, we start off in the Alamo in San Antonio, Texas, and it's the Battle of the Alamo going on. Right. Um, the Texans are trying to hold it against the invading forces, uh, and they are losing badly from the looks of this. Yeah, there are Everyone people getting shot right. all over. It's quite violent. Yeah, yeah. there's uh, their main character. Uh, Job, Alamo Job, he's a, a young boy. Uh, he's a volunteer in the army. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but he's still like, at least to me it seemed like he was like a teenager. Mid-teens, yeah. definitely. Um, it starts off in the battle, and he is, he's basically running support. He's yeah, reloading he's like people's re weapons. Yeah, giving them new what like changing them out. Ammo. Yeah. Um... I think he's doing some medic work there in the beginning, like pulling people out of battle if they're injured. Right. And but it's, it's pure chaos. That guy. Yeah, with his gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's pure chaos. Yeah. So he's running around shooting whoever isn't on his side. There's like 17 deaths in the first two minutes. Yeah, yeah, it's quite it, the kill count. <laughs> yeah, there's a. It was it was pretty violent. There's even a a knife got thrown and in, into the back of a Mexican. Yeah, that was. Uh, David Bowie, right? Yeah, David Bowie. <laughs> they were both there. Yeah. <laughs> so something strange starts to happen as he's wandering around the battle, kind of in a haze, because there's just explosions, gunshots, yeah, dust. Yeah, there's a lot of um, dust up in the air. Like, you can't see in front of you at all, and it gives it kind of like a little mystical feel. And some tourists walk out. Yeah. From the 80s. Some, uh, some uh, old woman and... Man, in couple. the typical tourist garb. Yeah, the guy had a fanny pack. They had like a one of those giant cameras. The white shorts. Yeah, they were walking around <laughs> talking about the different places and totally not affected by the battle. Right, the battle's still going on behind them. You and saw around people, them? you saw people dying, like getting shot. So Joe blank. is understandably <laughs> confused by this. And right, he's looking for them, but they disappear. And he, I guess, moves along, keeps providing uh, support, and his he can't friend... worry about it too long. Yeah, because he's it is, have... he's still. It was weird. He may but have he's still it. getting shot at. Definitely. <laughs> so his commander comes up to him and hands him a letter, and tells it to him to take this to uh, who was it, Colonel? But it's a General John Lefferts. Yeah. Uh, this wasn't listed on IMDb. We had to go back and rewatch part of it. Uh, yeah. IMDb, he's store storekeeper. Storekeeper or curator. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I don't know which one <laughs> he is. But uh, he's uh, told to give this letter to the general. So he starts making his way through the madness of the battle. Right. And the general is on a different street. He has to leave the battle. Yeah, he has to leave the uh, the, the Alamo. And go to some, uh, I think it was Shuttlecock Road. Yeah, that's it. So um, he's still but, going, and more apparitions from the future appear. Right, he turns around, like, he gets spooked because he thought him and the colonel, the guy who just died, was alone. But he hears someone behind him, he turns around and whips his gun at, to point at whoever's there, and it's. A whole group it's of It's like tourists a whole group of people, and it was a tourist 
uh, like a tour guide. So I love this scene. He's talking to the general. They're both on the ground because they've fallen after mm -hmm. a blast. And uh, no, a Mexican soldier comes up from behind and bayonets the general right in the yeah, lower back. Yeah, right in the back. Oh, just like, it ah. looks painful. <laughs> then, but he, before he dies, he does manage to turn around and shoot him in the face. The general so, does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he dies in Job's arms. Very violent. <laughs> but still really good. Um, so he, he sees the second group of tourists, and they're all taking pictures. Yeah. Walking right through the middle of the battlefield. Yeah, bullets flying everywhere, and he's yelling at him, you gotta get down, there's cannon fire coming. He's like, you're all gonna die if you don't get down. <laughs> As the battle intensifies, he runs in. Inside. Well, the Santa Ana's army comes in. Exactly, like, they it, break there's, through. There's just him and them, and they're chasing him down, and he's just, like, kind of gets surrounded, and he's, like, in a fire, like, they're all pointing at him in a fire No, spot. no, no, he seeks solitude in the, uh, inside the cloister, inside the Alamo, and winds up in a gift shop first. Right. And it's a mother, a father, and a teenage son buying, uh, souvenirs from the Alamo. And she's like, oh, they don't have any band shirts here. You have to get a San, a San Antonio one. Yeah, right. He said he didn't want one that says the Alamo, so they compromised. <laughs> <laughs> and this was crazy. They rang up two t-shirts. And uh, something else. Like a snow globe. Probably five things all together, and it came to $24. Right. <laughs> Go to any tourist trap now. No. What can you buy for $24? So this is when he goes, he leaves again, because he's super confused. Uh, winds up being surrounded by Santa Ana's men. Yeah. And they all this, prep their weapons. Yeah, He's standing up against the wall, execution style. He just, he just you know, see him resigns. He closes his eyes. And a hand reaches out of from out of frame and pulls him off screen. The bullets hit the wall behind him right as they fire, yeah. missing him. And he's fully pulled into our world now. Yeah, it was a security guard or or the guy who runs the the Alamo tourist attraction place now, throwing them out. It was after hours. Yeah, it was after <laughs> hours. So have you ever been to the Alamo? No. I went once, and it has some odd history from the time the battle took place until now. Right. It was actually lost for a while. They didn't know where... Uh, I did know that. They didn't know the significance yeah, of it. I did know that. It was a wall in a store, a warehouse store, right. for like a 50 years or something, before it became a tourist attraction again. So... He is now in present time, 1985. Right. And it's just a wondrous world. Buildings around him soar up. He handles it very well. He's so nonchalant about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's nonchalant, yet still driven. And wary. Yeah. But he has that not, makes sense. He has not given up on giving his message. So Despite this... being in the entirely new world with metal car... Like, Metal screaming death traps going down the road <laughs> and giant buildings made out of can't glass. Can't even see the top of exactly. <laughs> and we were joking. This doesn't look like the Texas either of us know. This is definitely California. Yeah, I don't. There it are palm trees. Yeah. Uh, people on roller skates. Yeah, <laughs> just like uh, like going by on the sidewalk. Art being done in public. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Texas was like in the eighties. <laughs> Uh, so he actually gets on a bus. He's wandering around. He sees people get on a bus, so he gets on. Yeah. Well, the bus driver's like, you gotta get on if you want to come. Mm -hmm. And I think it had, like, one of the general's names on it. Or it was leading to the street where he was going. I don't remember exactly. But he gets on the bus. He sits in the wrong place. And he has to go sit by the old woman in back. Right, yeah. And he's eliciting help from her. To get to Apparently he just got road. a free bus ride because yeah. he didn't have any money. Well, he's dressed as a historical reenactor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Maybe they just let it slide. Yeah, he's got the coonskin cap on. Mm -hmm. He's got a full musket. It's yeah. about a five foot musket with a bayonet on it. <laughs> he's dressed in all leather. Yeah, looks looks like a hunter trapper from around the time of the right, Alamo. Yeah. Uh, so he's on the bus and he's trying to get to Shuttlecock Road. They don't go directly there. They drop him off downtown. And this is where the trouble kind of starts. And we said it was full of action. The lull, the bus ride, that was like two minutes. And now we're almost straight back Yeah, to it was it. just him having a conversation with a nice old lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So he gets off the bus downtown and immediately starts harassing people, yeah, asking them if they know where Shuttlecock Road is. Yeah, or if they know uh, uh, General uh, Lefferts. Yeah, so he is dismissed by all of them. They're big city people just dismissing him, walking yeah, by, just shrugging him off. Um, and then a kid pops out, a little, a little boy dressed as a... Uh, was he dressed as a cowboy? He was dressed up. It, yeah. I, I believe he had some cowboy components to his costume. But then he had, like, an assault rifle toy. <laughs> From the future. Yeah. Which, I mean, that kind of fits. Yeah. <laughs> but he he jumps out of a, a shop uh, door. Yeah, he's like, bang, I got you. And the guy asks him for help, and he shows him where the p- telephone is. He says, that's how... Well, not yet. Oh? First, we gotta talk about how he was... The kid was just like, hey, you must be hot in that. He's like, oh, I am. He's like, are you thirsty? You can have some of this. And he tries it. And he tries yeah. it, and he's like, hmm, what is this? And he's just like, it's root beer. <laughs> His first soda. Yeah, and, th- and it was just like, hmm. So, <laughs> so not affected by it. <laughs> he makes a good time traveler. Yeah. he w- <sighs> Or he's in shell shock from the battle that he just witnessed before right? coming here. Who knows, but... Uh, so he tries root beer with no effect. There's there's something to be said for his determination. Oh yeah. Like even in the face of all of this, it like gets being worse. Thrown a hundred years in the future. It gets so much worse. He <laughs> he's got to deliver that letter. Yep. <laughs> so the kid shows him where the payphone is, how to use the uh, yellow pages, but neither of them have any money. And this is where the kid's mom enters the scene. Yeah, who says she needs to tie the kid up with some chains. Well, because he keeps wandering off. (laughs) Totally normal response. Yeah. (laughs) And I was commenting when we watched this that if this was an 80s movie, this is where we would have derailed from the story and he would have stayed with the mom and the kid. Yeah. Yeah. The mom's wearing nothing, basically. Skimpy shorts, see-through shorts. Skimpy shorts, see-through top. Super hot. And she gives him a couple of quarters, and after a minute, she wanders off out mm-hmm. of the out of the show forever. Mm-hmm. The so. kid's just like, bah. yeah. <laughs> and then the uh, Alamo Job makes a pretty good approximation on what he's supposed to do with a payphone. He puts See, the money in. He has no idea what a phone is we, even. No, but <laughs> there's a good forty years between the Battle of the Alamo and when the first phone call happened. Right. So he <laughs> he puts the coin in the right slot, and he picks up the the receiver, and he's like. He doesn't know what to do after that, but that's a pretty good guess. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty what most good, people do. He's a pretty good guess. He did, <laughs> granted, he was just a few. a few uh, One step away. He really. was like a few decades off from that working. Yeah. Where he could have just been like Shuttlecock Road and it would have shown him where it was. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's a decline in payphones now. They're not too common. They're Which still... is weird to me. Yeah. Payphones should be around. Definitely, because you lose your cell phone. Right. What happens if you lose your cell phone? You ask someone to use it, and they look at you like you're crazy. Yeah, that's why we need to bring back the payphone. We do have a couple here, but yeah, they're they're on the decline (laughs) pretty harshly. Um, They leave the scene, and he makes his attempt with the phone. Doesn't work. So he kind of goes back to asking people if they've seen it. Stumbles out into the road. Nearly gets hit by a giant blue van. Yeah, but he turns around and fucks it up with his gun. (laughs) He shoots it right right in the grill. with like Right as a cop was pulling up to stop him for, I'm assuming, jaywalking. Bad timing, yeah. Because he he, he (laughs) walks off into the middle of the street and the cop's like, Whoa, wait, what are you doing? And And then he turns around and shoots a car with the gun. And And his muscle loader stops this van in its tracks. Yeah, I was just like, well, also it could have been someone putting on the brakes. (laughs) But... (laughs) <laughs> so now the cops are trailing him. Yeah, and I mean, I I, th- I was thinking, you know, it's a good thing that he got sent to the eighties because nowadays he just would have been shot dead right then and there. Wah, wah. <laughs> the cop does pull his gun. Yeah, but, uh, but as as Elmo Dro runs away, he does not shoot into the crowd or shoot him in the back or anything. No. And this gives Elmo Joe a chance to get on the horse. Yeah, he Lucky. like runs around in a conveniently placed horse next to a truck. He, like, runs up, he's like, I know this one, and, like, does, like, a... He saddles it awesome. Well, it, he's from that time. Right. And but... he's in the army now. Yeah. <laughs> but he, like, leaps over a car, kind of slides over the hood yeah. of his horse. It's, it's pretty badass. Yeah. <laughs> Should have put some sunglasses yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> and he books it. Like, he knows how to control this horse the moment he's on oh, it. Oh, yeah. Going down the street, this avoiding is... traffic. You, you can just tell, like, he's like, oh, yeah, this is... 
This is uh, something I know. <laughs> and good thing he's in Texas, because that Battle of Alamo happened in 1836, I believe. Almost everywhere in the country was using horses then. Mm -hmm. If he had been transported to New York nowadays, no, this yeah. wouldn't happen. He would have been screwed. He could have got on the subway. That Maybe. Been, he, was, cool. he was really open to getting on the bus. He got on it like nothing. I like the 80s subways where they were all covered in spray paint and, like, ruled by gangs. <laughs> <laughs> Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, he, um, he avoids the cops. He has a long chase through a couple of parks. Yeah, he, well, he, he loses the cops in a parking garage. And oh, then leaves. Yeah. And then in the immediate next scene, he's just riding the horse outside and more cops come so I'm not sure like what the point of him losing them was mm -hmm. if like the next scene literally the cops come back <laughs> I bet he just made a wrong turn yeah because you can lose anybody anytime anywhere in a parking garage yeah it's a universal truth anywhere a parking garage if, if you're if someone's chasing you and you need to get away go for the parking garage parking garage they it's will multiple not levels you. and each level's like slanted different, so it's almost like a quantum type of space. Right. It's terrible. <laughs> so he leaves, he goes the wrong way, he gets three cop cars on him now, but they stop chasing him when they encounter some Benches. foot-high logs. No, these are just logs on oh, the ground. Oh, yeah, they're just like, eh, I guess he got away. Yeah, they're chasing <laughs> him through several parks, but he and, goes into one and yeah. they stop. Uh, this leads to him arriving at a outdoor painting scene. Yeah. It seems to be like a very strange a demonstration, a, paint, yeah. a gallery exhibition. Maybe. Yeah, but there's also a clown with some balloons. Yeah, it could be uh, a festival of yeah. some sort. A festival with an outdoor painting class. Yeah, <laughs> this is strange. Um, the painters accost him right away. Most people that see him, they don't really do anything. They shrug it off. They jump out of the way. But he comes up to the painters, and three of them, four of them, kind of just walk up to the horse, and they're like. What are you doing here, son? Why don't you give me that gun? Well, <laughs> first the kid is like he like that's not their immediate reaction. He does ask them they're, where. They're, at first, they're just like, "Hey, that's like a cool reenactor guy," and then he starts like. They seem pretty angry right away to me. Well, yeah, he's riding a horse in the middle of the <laughs> fucking street. <laughs> like, like he just came up in the middle of their shit on a horse. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, he might have a gun. I don't know if they know if it's... it's uh, we know it's real. Yeah. We've but... <laughs> seen several men. Uh, um, if I was painting in the park and a horse came up, I wouldn't be mad. That's all I'm saying. Um, he asked he, them several he, questions in a row. And yeah. And he's like, where's Shuttlecock Road? Do you know the general? Uh, quick, we gotta, we get... gotta hurry before Santa Ana's men's are coming and they overrun and kill everyone. Yeah, he's very vehement yeah. about gathering these people to fight. So yeah, he's he... trying to like rally them to, mm -hmm. to stop, stop Santa Ana. And this, we were talking about if we came to the, or went to the future, I don't know if I would still have that much dedication to the past. <laughs> right. I'd want to find I... out what happened. But if you can travel one way, you probably have enough time to travel back. He doesn't have a countdown clock. Or anything. Yeah, well, he's just—I don't know. Full dedication to the yeah, war. Yeah, he's—he's he, been single-minded. Yeah. Uh, he has to get this letter. Uh, I'm not even sure he fully realized that he was in the future True. until this time, because the the guy makes a comment about how like. We didn't uh, lose a hundred years ago. We yeah, lose we'll today. make sure there's always the Texas. Like there was a exactly. hundred years ago, and there's like there is now. So you, know, you can just kind of like see it on his face, where he's just like a <laughs> hundred years. Oh God! And he rides off. They go for his gun. They try yeah, to grab they it. try to grab the gun. He does ride off, and he finds Shuttlecock Road. Yeah, finally find out. He finds Sh Shuttlecock Road. And luckily, the general's great-grandson yeah. has an antique store on the road with his name in big letters above it. Lefferts. So, yeah. so he go, he's like, hey, found it, yay! <laughs> <laughs> Quest almost complete. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he leaves the horse. Mm -hmm. Don't know if he ties it up or what. Don't see that. No. Might just smack it on the ass and send it on its way. Yeah, who knows. <laughs> uh, goes in the store, encounters the shopkeeper, has the awkward moment of... Do you know General John Leffert? And he's like, well, I'm John Leffert. General was my great-great-great- Yeah, whatever, that was my great-great-grandfather. He presents the letter to him. He's like, this is for you, sir. And while he's inspecting the letter, uh, Job is looking around the store, and he's like, oh, is this a 
Bowie knife? Yeah. He's like, this is one of Mr. Bowie's knife. And it was just sitting out in the open, no yeah. glass. Yeah. <laughs> and he's and they, all fingering so it So he up. finally asks, he's finally, like, builds up the courage to be like, so what happened? And the guy's, he's obviously just, like, engrossed in this letter. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just kind of like, what do you mean? And he's just, <laughs> like, looking at the letter, you can tell he's just like, is this, there's no way this is real. <laughs> you mean this hundred-year-old letter on fresh paper? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because so. he makes a comment, he's like, the, he's like, the, 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 like, bullet residue on this is fresh. Gunpowder, yeah. The gunpowder on it is fresh, and he's like, and there's fresh blood, and he's just like... <laughs> And uh, Job is looking at artifacts, and he finds a belt buckle that's identical to the one he's wearing. Right. And it's pretty unique. And this is at the same time where he finds out that everyone dies. Mm-hmm. Pretty the guy, dark. He, he says, so, so what happened? And he's like, what happened where? He's like, the Alamo. And he's like, oh, everyone died. So after Job finds out everyone has died at the Alamo, the shop owner confirms that this letter is real. Yeah. A yeah. real historical artifact written by his great-grandfather. Right. And he asked him how... No, long... written to his great-grandfather. Yeah, yeah, you're right. From someone at the Alamo. Whoever is Joe's uh, superior officer. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he asked him how much he wants for it. Because it's, yeah. it's a priceless relic. Right, he's just like, so how much do you want? And the kid's just like, well, I don't, I don't want your money, sir. <laughs> Quest completed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the guy's just like, wait, no, you gotta be kidding me. Like, how much, this you, is real. how much do you want? This is real. <laughs> and he's just like, no, I don't, I don't want your money. He's like... He just leaves. He just leaves. And the guy's just like, blown away. <laughs> uh, oh, he does get the horse back. He though. must have tied it he up does, outside. He does still have the horse. He gets on the horse, rides it... Oh. He goes over to somebody, asks him which way the Alamo is. Yeah, it's a janitor. And, and whenever the janitor turns around, we see it looks exactly like him, but with glasses. Yeah. So this could be, like, he survived and it's his lineage, his grandchild, or... Or he had a child at 12. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> Reincarnation type right. thing. I mean, time's malleable in this episode. Right. We see that. Who knows. Uh, one, epi one thing we skipped over really quick was the breakdancer. Which we have to explain because it's in our opening. Yeah, there was the <laughs> what was his uh, master Jack, rap master Jack. <laughs> <laughs> he he's break dancing. Job comes up. He's watching. Uh, the guy stops break dancing, approaches him, and then he steals his hat and runs away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty low. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, pretty low, pretty low, <laughs> bad form. So. After he leaves the antique shop, gets back on the horse, rides straight back to the Alamo after asking his uh, janitor self where it is, because he points him in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. He's like, where's the Alamo? And the guy's like, over that way, The sir. cops must have stopped looking him, for him. Both him and his uh, predecessor, extremely polite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> his uh, future self, though, much thicker Texas accent, I noticed. Yeah. Which is strange. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the accent was during the 1860s in Texas, mm, though. Who knows? Who right? knows? And he didn't talk much. Yeah, there was, he wasn't much of a talker. He, so well, they, you, did, you did hear him, like, asking around a lot. Like, yeah. saying this, like, asking, do you know where... Probably the seven or eight lines is? of dialogue total, though. Yeah. He rides the horse back to the Alamo. Gets off, ro walks through the door he was pulled through. And you can hear gunfire going off behind it. And I assume walks right back into his death, that firing squad. Right. He just walks back in, and that's the end of the episode. Goes black. Pretty heavy. Right? It had whimsical think, music the whole time, though. <laughs> I, think he, I think he died at the time that the firing squad shot at him, and the guy pulled him out. Because that was the first time that he actually interacted with someone from the future. Why do you think he was seeing them before that? Just a place of great suffering and battle? It made like a thin spot or something Who in knows? time and space? Who yeah. Knows? It was deep, but it was also kind of shallow. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, uh, like we said, the acting was a little... I did like it. Yeah. A good time travel story. A uh, really good short story. I mean, they have to wrap up quick. Right, yeah. Uh, that's the thing about these. They're only like 22 minutes, but they feel, they a feel lot, like a lot gets set. A lot packed into yeah, it. Yeah, there's a lot into it, but it doesn't, it doesn't really feel rushed a lot of the time. And that's why I love them, and you yeah. can blow through them so fast. Next week we'll, 
We'll be back with another episode of Maze Balls, and we'll be covering a uh, mummy daddy. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you guys then.